Okay, we're here for Fax TV. This is the uh, post Rochdale, but we're also going to try and talk about the Dewsbury game as well. Um, you probably realise that for the past couple of weeks we've been trying out different types of videos. We would love to hear your feedback, so if you use Twitter at Halifax underscore RLFC, or if you can send us an email to info at halifaxrlfc.co.uk, we'd love to hear your views and feedback you want to give us for future videos. But anyway, Good afternoon, Carl. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Very warm and sweaty. Well, Due to the hot weather. Which is which is nice for artifacts for once, but apparently it's not going to last, so well, enjoy we'll what see. it's here. We'll see. Very nice. So, the Rochdale game. Nice to get a win underneath the belt, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I thought, for 60 minutes, I thought we were very, very good. Uh, also, a little bit of composure, maybe in the last 20, but uh, with the pressure we'd been under that week, the previous week, I thought we had a massive response from the players, and... I thought the young guys stood up as well and, and, and answered some questions. Do, do you find the players took it well for the, the mixing up? I mean, for me, the move from Manning, we obviously you got the injuries issue at one point in the season, you put Manning in the centre, I think it was against White over the way. Did you just feel, it'll work then, it'll work now? Well, Dane is a very consistent player, probably the most consistent player we have in the, in, in the squad. Uh, and he can play a multitude of positions. You know, he generally plays right back row. So just moving to a more defensive spot is not a real big deal. It actually makes him a little bit fresher because he's not got as much involvement. And uh, yeah, Dane's one of our best players and played really, really well. And uh, But that was down to form of, of Danny and, and Ben, who have been uh, sort of struggling the last couple of weeks. But it's now up to them two to force my hand to get uh, Dane moved back into the forward pack. Do you feel that the fact that Robinson's come back from injury that made it a bit easier for you to put Manning in at centre? Or was it purely because of the form issues and you thought, right, Dane's a good substitution to put in there? Well, Dane's a player we, we, we can rely on when they're going stuff and he uh, can play a multitude of different positions and, and variants within his game. Um, Adamson, we move him out to, the, out to the second row. He's been getting a bit tight in games because we've been playing in the middle of the unit as a loose forward. So he just freshened the whole team up and it was down to form why uh, both Ben and uh, Danny weren't in. Oh, let's talk about the, the idea of swapping around got the loose forwards. Jack and Sam had great games, didn't they? Were they the, how were your expectations for trying them both in that role? Uh, Sam's been knocking on the door for a while, you know, he's, he's been unlucky. He would have played up at Workington, but he, he, had, Ill, he, was, he had illness. In the week leading up to it, he had tonsillitis, so we pulled him out, and so he couldn't play. And if he'd have played at Workington, he would have probably kept his spot the week after and the week after. But after last week's game against North Wales, he deserved his chance. He's been patient, and uh, and I thought he gave a real good account of himself. It was a bit of a risk throwing Jack Spencer in. Uh, I've known Jack since he was 16 years old. A lot of when I signed him at Salford, he was a 16 year old. Uh, he went to Western uh, West Tigers in Australia and uh, broke his ankle there. Nine months out of the game, came back, couldn't get a club over here. Went to France for, for, for their season and, and played okay. And when he came back, I got in touch with him and said, "Hey, we'll give you a month's trial. Uh, how about uh, coming to Palifax for a month? We'll have a look at you, see if it works out for both parties." He, he lives in the Swinton area, uh, just, just this side of, of Salford, so it's only thirty minutes away. And he came down, gave a good account of himself in the twenties. Made, made a, a big impression within training. He's got probably the biggest head I've seen on a 23-year-old man in the life. He weighs about 10 stone. Made a real big impression. Uh, Tall lad, isn't he? It, it, it's a, it's a, big, it's a big, big lump of a lad. And so he, met, he, he bumped a few players around with his first training session with the first team squad. So we thought, hey, let's have a look at you. Uh, and, and he played well. And, um, and at the moment, we are talking to him about a contract for the remainder of this season. Uh, and for next season, so he's only 23 year old, uh, front row forward, uh, of good pedigree. What about the opening few minutes of the game? Do, do these lads seem to be a bit nervous. For what, the confidence that the fans are talking about and what they're saying in the press, do you think the first five minutes was about settling in, realising well the players were? Because they made a few mistakes, I think from kickoff. It went straight out and fall. Well, that puts you under, under the team under massive pressure. Uh, the boys were all pumped up but last week. They wanted a good showing. They knew what would have turned out against North Wales. 
was an acceptable and they wanted a good showing this week and, and, they, and they gave one. Uh, but was under massive pressure from the first time, as you say. Scotty Manel kicked out on the field from kickoff. We've mentioned about 10 times in warm up and brain bash, it was a short field. Uh, you'd be careful with these kickoffs anyway. Half an ounce to Emmy. Uh, so we defend our line for the first five minutes and showed remarkable resilience to be truthful to, to keep them out because they've got some real good attacking players and over the all, over the, you know, we won at a canter, uh, squeeze their big minute of the game and stop their half backs playing. Ryan Miller has been tearing teams to bits this season and uh, he had a real quiet game, which is great on our guys. Speaking of attack though, we went with Menel and um, Holden this time. Yes. And Holden got named in the team of the week. You did. So he must be pleased with those two. I mean, both very attacking hookers anyway. Was, uh, is that now going to make life very hard for Ben K? Well, it's up to Ben to get back in the team. You know, Ben's not done a great deal wrong. But I keep saying we're back to, after North Wales, we had to make some changes and I thought we'd been playing a little bit slow. A lot of that was because of the conditions. We knew we was going to get a fast field and we tried maybe two fast hookers in, in, in Paul and Keith and they both went real well so the pressure is on Ben now to force my hand in practice. See all I do, and I say this to players all the time, all coaches do is name the team. The players pick the team by their performance and efforts in training and game day. And if they look after themselves and play well they'll be in the team every week but if you're slightly off from somebody else's in, they'll get picked. When you talk about pressure, one of the fans has asked this, come direct through to Fax TV, where's the pressure on Steve Tyron? Because he, he didn't have the particularly greatest of angles, which is not really his fault, that's where the tries were scored. But he did miss a few conversions. So where's the, the competition for him in his place? Well, Paul Bell's a goal kicker, Scott Bell can kick goals. Uh, but Steve is a recognised goal kicker. He did have an off day with the boot. Uh, this week, and he has been practicing. He's been doing extra practice uh, for the last few weeks. And sometimes with, with goal kickers, you just need something to refocus on because we've lost a couple of games this year because of our missing goal kicks. And Steve's fully aware of that, but we've got to be real careful. We don't make him too nervous as well. Uh, Steve is a, a typical, the old confidence player. Steve, he can get really down or really high, and we need Steve Tyler high because with ball in hand, he's playing really well. Nick said there's fantastic catches for two tries on Sunday yeah, alone anyway. Absolutely. So is it this case of uh, massaging his ego accordingly? Yeah, so we've got a few people who can kind of kick goals. Keith Holland's a goal kicker as well. Fair keeps in the team. Uh, but Steve is in the team at the moment where Ben, De, ben Eaton and uh, Danny Cowan are out. Uh, so the pressure's on Steve to keep performing well to keep him. On the point of performing well, Wayne Retty had a great game, he's not been included for a while. Did you have to speak with Wayne to say he'd be included because we need to shake things up? Or yeah. was it a case of you had confidence in him as a type of player anyway? Uh, Wayne's had a tough season. I, I do like Wayne, he's, he's a real good bloke, good honest fella, good family man. And uh, of course, in the form of Pop, somebody obviously bringing Saxton in, uh, who's played really well for the team. It was really hard for Wayne because Potsy, to be fair, and and Tommy had not done a great deal wrong. I thought Potsy was a little bit off. I thought our right edge against North Wales was a little bit off. That's why both Danny and Potsy were left out. And I thought Rex came in and threw the gun straight back at me and said, listen, I want this spot. And that's what we want players to do. You've got to earn the right to be in the team. And once you're in the team, you've got to do the right things to stay in it. And, and Rex did that. There was a few points throughout the game. You saw the Menel and Retty, the old Batley connection, didn't you? Where Menel was having to miss players out. Uh, there was a few... Unfortunately, it went to touch, didn't it? Yeah, but, but things were there. You could see things. You know, we, we won the game 28 to 12 in the end, but that could easily have been a 40 points to, to six game. Uh, it just never sort of materialised. With us, Steve gets he missed four goal kicks, eight points there. We probably bombed another three or four tries. It was quite a dominant performance, to be truthful. So let's take the positives out. Let's not be negative. But show the guys what we did good, and just sort of talk about. Areas of improvement, that's what we intend to do this week. A player who never seems to get in the spotlight, who seems to be captain dependable, is Callum Casey. Is he the sort of player you like to call upon? Because again, he was back in the team and we won. He seems to do everything right but never gets spoken about. Is he happy with that? Are you, is he the sort of player you like to coach and get in the team? Oh, Callum's a coach's dream. Um, if anything, he's probably a little bit too quiet and that's why he does get forgotten about uh, at times by by spectators and coaches alike, you know, he's had a bit of a rough season like Rex himself as, as Callum has sort of been 
in and out of the team, but he's got to compete for a position, you know, with with, with Robinson, Manning, Devote. Uh, it, it's really tough for him. We can only carry sort of one utility stroke back rower or, or on the bench because I told Collins the other week I think he's slightly behind Manning, Adamson and Devote at the moment for a starting spot. But that's up to him. And Callum never ever lets you down. There's little things right, works really, really hard. And he got a real bad knock on Sunday, came off he Met him with the doctors, he had to go to hospital Sunday night, he had an eye injury but he couldn't actually see out of his left eye, so hopefully he'll be okay tonight for practice. Towards the end of the game, also we had the unfortunate two tries. Mm -hmm. Do you think they, they, we had a bit of an injury for one of the Rochelle players towards the end? Do you think that to sort of knock the lads' concentration, you know, to slow the intensity? No, I don't think that as in Rochelle have been trying all day, we kept them out. I think a big part of the game was in the second half. We only had the ball for 14 times, 14 sets to Rochdale's 23 times. So seven sets, that's seven times six missed ta more tackles than us. And eventually just wore us down. And some of them were our fault through overplaying, dropping the ball, turning it over cheaply, or in discipline, giving penalties away, having to defend double sets. And uh, we need to learn from that. We can't afford to give, like we give Lee the other week, where right? the game changed on the sixpence and we could not get the ball for a long period of time. And eventually, at this level of foot, it, Runs the juice out of your legs. One of the comments that a few of the fans have mentioned on the forum was at this game, you saw you on the sidelines barking at the troops. Was that just a logistics thing of the stadium or was that something yes. you wanted to do more of? No, it's just a logistics thing. Uh, it's the uh, seating at Rochdale is only about seven, eight rows deep anyway, so there was no benefit. Uh, I just thought it would be changed for, for me and myself to for being on the sideline, but I'll probably go back in the stand next week, so I can't get abused. But on on a, on a serious perspective, can you just tell fans what is, you do at the top end? I mean, I know what you do, because I see every game. But from a perspective, we know you've talked to Lee on touchline. Yes. Um, what are you looking at from such a high position? It's difficult to see a sideline, the far sides of fields. You can't see, uh, firstly, the opposition shape defensively and offensively, they're attacking players so we can reorganise our defence if they slightly change off our preparation through the week. For, for us, we're looking at ways we can exploit the opposition, looking for players who are tired, looking for players who are injured. I just try to find where the space is on the field you can see from a more elevated position. And I just think sometimes it's, it's good to be aware from the sideline where at times it becomes really intense, really loud, and you lose a little bit of focus with distractions, lots of distractions on the bench, and I think to be a coach you, you need to be real smart and a little bit patient, a little bit standoffish, and, and just be real smart in what you do. What's happening with Tommy Saxton then? We've not seen anything in the press recently. Do we know how long we've got him for? Uh, Tommy has got his loan agreement runs out on June the 2nd and we're working behind the scenes to uh, make that longer. Obviously there's a new regime at Featherstone. Um, I'm going to talk to them to see what's going on there. But Tommy wasn't wanted by the Featherstone club at the start of the season. Uh, but that coach uh, has now gone with the new coach wants him. I don't know, but Tommy Saxon's been great for us. We want to keep Tommy here for this season and for next season. And, and I'm going to try and make that happen. Does Tommy want to stay? Yes. And when we last spoke, we talked about Simon Brown. What's the situation with Simon? Simon's back training. Back training. He trained well last week, uh, but unfortunately, it's just real tough for him in the, in the 17. I can only pick 17 jumpers. I can't pick 23 people like some spectators think we can. We've got 17 places to fill by people we think are going to do, do a job that weekend, and I think we've got to call right this week. So this weekend, we've got Doonesbury with Anthony Thackeray, both facts boy. He's got five tries against the Barrow team. How do you now start preparing for that? We always ask this question every week now on Fax TV. Mm -hmm. But somebody like Fax, we know him. We know how he played here. Or do you think under Glenn Morrison he's going to be a completely different player? And we've got our own fire in, in, in the players like Johnson. I think Fax has probably changed his game a little bit. I think each player picks something we coach them with at the time. And I think we improved him as a player. Uh, he's got his son, but he's also got. His, his, his individual traits that made him a good player before he came in and, and when he played at Widnes and LFC and Castleford before that. Uh, he won't be a big part of our game plan. The game plan will be totally different to what he was at Rochdale. Uh, the size of the field is huge. 
Yields, but really, really small. It's a, it's a big issue. Yields issue is the field at uh, Dewsbury. It's uh, a lot skinnier than normal fields and a lot shorter. The wind blow, generally blows down into it, affects kicking game. And you need to be on your metal because you know they're a good team this year at Dewsbury. They're the big physical. They've already beaten Featherstone there. They've, I think they've beaten Sheffield away as well. And I think they're, they're not a bad team at all. Glenn Morrison coaching them really well. And, and again, our middle guys, the big fellas in the middle. Need to muscle up to give ourselves any chance of getting a result there. It's not been a happy hunting ground for us, has it recently? Uh, it wasn't last year. No, we got beat in the Northern Rail Cup there last year. Uh, but I like it just where it's a proper traditional rugby league club run by proper rugby league people, and uh, it's always good to go there. Exactly. Well, good luck for Sunday. Thank you. Uh, Fax TV will be back with Carl next week, uh, and hopefully we'll be again talking about another win.